Praise the Lord, everybody. It's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to bless his name. And on this Thanksgiving morning, we come to bless and honor the name of Jesus. Wherever you are, we invite you to worship with us. Come on, clap your hands. Come on. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on. Lord, you are good right here. Come on, let's go. Lord, you are good and your mercy enduring forever. Say it again, everybody say. Lord, you are good and your mercy enduring forever. Everybody, everybody say. Lord, you are good and your mercy enduring forever. Come on, people from every nation.
Yes, 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 the Lord is so good. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. And wherever you are, will you join us in being glad in it? Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome to the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden online experience on this Thanksgiving day. Amen. I'm Minister Sylvester Harvey, and I'm happy to be your worship leader for this Thanksgiving Day service. Amen. Now, if you will, on that chat button, will you let us know where you're worshiping with us from? City, state, country. Also, while you're doing that, share this link with family and friends. Well, you know, not just family and friends, but we want everybody to be blessed. So share it with Lottie, Dottie, and everybody. Amen? Our scripture reading today will be from the book of Luke. That would be Luke 17, 11 through 19. I'll pause for just a moment while you gather your Bible, whether it's conventional or electronic. Amen. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Amen. Ain't that good news? Ain't that good news? Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to come and worship you. Thank you for the increase. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the restoration. Bless Pastor Jenkins and First Lady Trina. Bless Pastor's word from you today that it may fall on fertile soil and you receive the victory. Amen. We will now have our FBCG News, our announcements. Calling all.
all church leaders and those who aspire to lead. It's time to become securely connected and fully charged at the 2022 Beyond Church Leadership Conference. For ministers around the world, it's been nearly two years of trial and error to continue the work of the church through virtual worship services, classes, events, and gatherings. This year's conference will offer tools and tips to help you become securely connected to your members and fully charged despite the uncertainty, missteps, and instability of ministering in a hybrid world. On Cyber Monday, November 29th, for one day only, you can register for the 2022 Beyond Conference at a discounted registration rate. We don't want you to miss out on this great cost savings, so be sure to visit thebeyondconference.com before 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday, November 29th, to complete your registration and be sure to tell a friend. As Pastor Jenkins stated, we are excited as we will be resuming our services back into the Worship Center Sunday, December 12th. All services will continue to be streamed online, beginning with Sunday morning services at 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m., with an online rebroadcast at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. For updates, check our website over the coming weeks for more details. That's the news for this week. You can find more details about these events and others on our church website at fbclenarden.org. First Baptist Church of Glen Arden members, God has blessed us for being such good givers. We've been more than just sustained during this pandemic. We've made a positive impact locally, statewide, and nationwide. You can give online by pushing that give button. You can do it now or any time during the week. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for being the first giver that you've given so much to us that we are more than grateful to give back to you. Please receive our humble offering and use it for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, after the next selection you hear, will be the voice from our very own pastor, John K. Jenkins, who God has blessed indeed. Amen. Today we've come to honor the Lord for being so faithful. That's really what Thanksgiving is, the goodness and the faithfulness of our God. And wherever you are, as we prepare for the word of the Lord, we're going to sing this to his honor and to his glory. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord, for your mercies never fail me. All my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkness night You are close like no other I've known you as a father 
I've known you as a friend And I have lived In the goodness of God Come on everybody All my life And all my life You have been faithful And all my life You have been so So again everybody to the glory of God and all my life your presence today, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness and your kindness. Your goodness is running after us. We can feel you moving by your spirit every single day. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor, Lord. Hallelujah to your name. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing and glad in it. I want to thank our music ministry for preparing us for worship and leading us to this place to receive the word. I greet all of you today on this marvelous, wonderful Thanksgiving day in the name of the Lord. Thank you for joining us wherever you are in the world. So excited and so grateful that God has awakened us to see another day that was not promised to us. I'm so grateful for the life, health, and strength that God gives to us. And 
we are gathered together today. We are coming together. Hopefully you're uh, with your families or wherever you might be on this Thanksgiving day. Thank God for this day. And uh, I'm grateful and thankful. We're going to uh, do what we do all the time and just take a moment and pray uh, and intercede for people that we love and care about, our friends, and relatives, and acquaintances, neighbors, and coworkers that we know need Jesus, need him in their lives. So we never forget about it, even on this holiday. We're praying and interceding. And I'm thinking about three or four people that are on my list that I'm praying for, that I'm believing God to draw them into the kingdom. And we're excited that I'm believing God is going to do something significant in their lives. And I'm praying and believing God to transform their lives and wake them up to see their need for the Lord. So join me in prayer as we pray and take a moment to pray for the message and for ministry and for the people that we love and care about. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for waking us up this day and allowing us to have the activities of our limbs. Thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercies that you have extended to us, even though we know we don't deserve them. Thank you for saving us, redeeming us, and cleansing us is our prayer. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for breakthroughs and miracles that you have brought into our lives. We do not count it as a light thing or small thing for the miracles that you've done on our behalf. So from the depths of our hearts, almighty God, we give you thanks and praise. We give you all of the glory and all of the praise. We're praying today that your will will be done in our lives, that you would rule and reign in every aspect of our lives, of our homes and our marriages and our families with our children. And we're praying in particular that you would reign in the lives of people that we're praying for, that we know need you, who we know who have uh, some God who have never surrendered their lives to you. We want to pray for them. We want to intercede that you would rule and reign in their lives, open their eyes, help them to see their wayward ways, help them to see their desperate need for you in their life. We are praying, Father, for backsliders, people who have drifted out of fellowship with you, who walked away, who the devil, the enemy, has been successful in blinding them. Father, we're praying that you would open their eyes and help them see their need for you. Father, we're praying today on this Thanksgiving day that you meet the needs of broken, bruised, hungry, poor, desperate people, that you would meet their needs, accommodate whatever they stand in the need of. And God, we confess our sins and acknowledge our transgression, and we thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us and washes all of our sins away. Thank you for your, your, your mercy and compassion that you have extended toward us. And then, Father, we pray today that you would put a shield around us, put a shield around this place as we break the bread of life, put a shield around our homes, around our families, around uh, our communities. We pray that you would build a shield around us. And then, Father, we pray that your name would get all of the glory, your empire would be lifted up and exalted. You would get all of the glory and all of the thanks. Thank you, almighty God. It is from the depths of our hearts that we give you the praise and you the glory and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I want to invite you to open your Bibles to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 17. And in there in Luke chapter 17 is a very familiar passage of Scripture that I want to take a fresh look at. This is chapter 17 of Luke beginning at verse 11. It says this, beginning of verse 11. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him 10 men who were lepers who stood afar off and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go. Show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? 
were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Look at verse number 17. Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? And that's the question I want to ask today. Where are the nine? Where are the nine? This passage is a familiar passage. It's probably been preached a million times over decades. It's such an incredible passage. It's an interesting story to read. I love this story. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, on his way uh, to Jerusalem, and he passes through the provinces of Samaria and Galilee. He's on his way to Jerusalem, and he passes through these two places, both of which are significant places. Allow me to spend a moment and talk about the fact that on his way to the Jerusalem, the city of God, the place where God dwells, he passes through two places that are called places of rejection because mixed people lived here, P- people who were not pure blood, purely Jewish. These were people who had mixed blood. They had some Jewish blood, but they also had some Gentile blood live there. Galilee was his boyhood home. And all of the disciples came from Galilee except one. Jesus there performed 25 of his 35, 33 miracles in Galilee. 19 of his 32 parables were spoken in Galilee. His ministry was headquartered there. Yeah, this place of rejects, he made it his choice and decision to be the place that he would house his ministry. And then there's Samaria, the Samaria, the home of the Samaritans. Again, mixed blood people who were rejects to the Jews. The Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. They were considered unclean. They had to, could not come close, would not communicate. The Jews would not communicate. This Here Jesus, on his way to Jerusalem, passes through these two places of rejects. He made it his business to stop by there. And while he's on his way, going through these two places, it says, going through these two places, it says he entered a certain village. He's on his way and he entered a certain village. He doesn't even tell us the name of the village, but he he passes through a certain village. And it is as he passes through this certain village that he encounters, the scripture says, 10 men who were lepers. Now, this is an important deal. Because these these 10 men have a disease, an incurable disease. It could not be cured. They didn't have an answer for it. This this leprosy that they had, they were lepers. And and lepers had to stay away from people. They They were considered super unclean. They were definitely unclean. And so here, here their role, their responsibility is to stay away from everybody else. And so they're the outcasts. They're on the outcasts of the city in this village, hanging out. They have found and formed themselves a group together, all 10 of these lepers. They're hanging out together. They had this one thing in common, their sickness. But while they're in this, uh, with this unclean condition and in this unnamed place, somewhere between or through or around unclean, reject cities. I love that right there because here's what I learned about God. He's a God that cares about rejects. He cares about people that other folks pass off and push off and don't care about. That's what I love about the Lord Jesus. He loves and cares about people who nobody else wants. And I believe there might be somebody on this on this broadcast today, somebody listening to this message who you have feel cast out and pushed away and unloved and uncared about. That's what these 10 lepers were. These 10 men were in, were in a condition where nobody loved them, cared about them. They were outcast. Jesus, the God that we serve, cares about the people who are outcast. And if you're a person who's an outcast person, if you find yourself in a reject condition, I got good news for you. God cares about you. And while these these 10 men see Jesus passing by, uh, it says this in verse number 13. It says they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. I, I, I can't I can't give it the enthusiasm or the fervor or the passion with which they said it. They cried out, Jesus, master, 
They knew him to be a healer and a deliverer. They cried out to him. And here's my first point. They, they in fact, made a request. This is important. They made a request. They were not ashamed to cry out and say, Master, have mercy on us. Come and have compassion on us. Please show us. We need your help. We're the outcasts. We're alone. And I believe there are people today who are in outcast conditions. I'm here today to tell you nobody else might not want you, but Jesus wants you. He loves about you. He loves you. He cares about you. He's concerned about your life. He's concerned about your conditions and your, your drama and your pain. Others might have pushed you aside, but the Lord Jesus cares about you. But make a request. Don't be ashamed to tell God what your needs are. He's listening. He'll, he'll incline his ear. The Bible says that they lifted up their voices. They made a request. I'm here to tell you today. They called and I want to tell you today, whatever your pain, whatever your challenge, whatever your condition, whatever your concerns, whatever's bothering you, make a request to the Lord Jesus. That's why I love about him. He hears our faintest cry. Over and over again in the Psalms, the Bible talks about God inclining his ear to us, about him hearing our requests and hearing our, our cry to him. You cry out to the Lord Jesus and he will hear you. These men cried out to Jesus on his way to Jerusalem, on his way to the city of God. They cried out to him and he heard their cry. In fact, the scripture says in verse number 14, it says, so when he saw them, I love that. Jesus saw them in their condition. Jesus will see you. They made a request and his point too. He saw them and he responded. His point too, he responded. Somebody said there was a response. Jesus made a response. They made a request. He made a response. That's how it rolls. He, you make a request. He makes a response. You cry out to him. He hears you. He saw them, it says. And he said to them, listen to what he does. I love this. He gave them some specific instructions. The thing I love about the Lord Jesus is that when you cry out to him and you want him to work on your behalf, he will give you clear instructions. He gave them some clear instructions. He said in verse 14, go show yourself to the priest. Go and show yourself to the priest. You see, the significance of that statement is this. If a person had an unclean condition, the only way they could be declared clean, even if you could look at them physically and their physical condition had changed, the scripture says they had to go to the priest and the priest would declare that they were clean. Jesus said, go to the priest, go to the priest and show yourself to the priest. And so they began to go on their way. I love this. And so it was, it says in verse 14. I love this right here. And so it was that as they went, on their way, while they made a move. This is important. You got to learn to make a move. If God tells you to do something, make a move. Don't sit around. Don't say, don't, don't push it to the side. Don't delay it. Don't pros, procrastinate. Make a move. They made a move and they made a move as they went. I love this right here. As they went, they were healed, verse 14 says. As they were on their way, they got their healing. As they made a move to obey the Lord Jesus, they got healed. I love it, I love it, I love it that as they obeyed God, as they did what God told them to do, their condition changed. I wonder how many of you are still in the condition that you were in because God told you to do something, but you failed to do it. He told you to tithe, but you haven't done it. He told you to get saved, but you haven't done it. He told you to be obedient, but you, hasn't, you haven't done it. He told you to repent, but you haven't done it. He told you to do something, but you have failed to do it. He told you to get counseling, but you didn't do it. You kept pushing it off. He told you to do X, Y, and Z, but you haven't done it. These men got their miracle because they has, right when they heard it, they went, they obeyed. As they went, they were healed. I believe that we serve a God who's willing to move on your behalf when you, when you are obedient to what he tells us to do. When he gives you the instructions, it gives you the direction. Do what God tells you to do. He's calling us to be obedient. As they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, verse 15 says, let me, let me, let me, I love this right here, verse 15 and 16. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Let me talk about this for just a few moments. I'm almost finished. It's a short thing. I know y'all got food waiting. I know mama's in the kitchen cooking. I know you got that turkey rolling and those mac 
mac uh, uh what's it called mac, mac and cheese and i know you got gravy and sweet potato pie and all of that is waiting for you and 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 you need me to hurry up i'm gonna hurry up and finish i'm not i'm, I'm gonna hurry get done so you can do whatever it is you got done i know you're waiting for the football game to come on you're doing whatever you're doing today but my assignment is to tell you, not only did they make a request of Jesus, Jesus responded. And not only did he respond, this person got the healing. And here's the big point I want to make today. There was a recognition of what he did. That's what is special about this day. Somebody recognized what he did. Thanksgiving is a day of recognition of the goodness of God in your life. The text right here says, out of the 10 of them, only one of them recognized what had happened. One of them, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, one of them, as he was on his way to see the priest, he saw that his body had changed, his condition had been healed, his circumstances had been switched around. God made a move on his behalf. Let me prophesy to somebody today. God is about to make a move on your behalf. Will you recognize it? They recognize, he recognized it. One of them recognized it when he saw and he returned and with a loud voice glorified God. With a loud voice he celebrated and gave God the praise. With a loud voice he came back to give thanks to God. He had a recognition. He recognized that he was healed. And when he got that recognition he returned. He went back to Jesus. I love that right there. I love it because Jesus said go show yourself to the priest. And, and, and what I like about it uh, verse number 19 says, and Jesus said to him, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. I like that because here's what here's what's significant about that. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest, but he hadn't made it to the priest. He got healed. But guess what? He did show himself to the priest. Jesus is the priest of priests. <laughs> I love that right there. He said, I, I don't need to go see the priest again. I've been healed. I did what you said, told me to do. I went on the way. I've been changed. I've got a miracle. And so I'm going to show myself to the priest of priests, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. He went back to him. He returned. And with, I like this right here, when he saw that he was healed and with a loud voice, he glorified God. This wasn't a hesitant thing. He wasn't quiet. It wasn't just a bowed head thing. He didn't whisper it. He opened his mouth and gave God thanks. It is the time for us to open our mouths and give God a loud praise. Because the truth of the matter is he has healed us. He has delivered us. He has saved us. There's something I want you to recognize that God has done in your life. Everybody watching right now, God has done something in your life significant. Something major, something incredible. God has opened some door, answered some prayer, brought some miracle in your life. He has done something for you for which I hope you can recognize his hand of what he's done for you. Please don't, don't miss out what God has done for you. Don't miss out the, the miracles he's done and the doors he's opened. And there's things I know he's done for you that you can't even tell people about. Such some secret things, some doors, some miracles, some breakthroughs he's done for you that you, you, you haven't even told anybody about. But you can still give him the praise. You can still give him the glory. You can still give him thanks. You can still lift your hands and open your mouth and tell God, thank you. I know he's done something for you that he's worthy of you to give him the glory with a loud voice with a loud shout, with a loud celebration. There's a multitude of scriptures over and over again that tells us and repeatedly encourages us to in, uh, uh, be expressive in our worship to God. Right where you are, give him the glory. Right where you are, tell two or three people around your family, I'm thankful. Here's what I'm thankful for. Our family every Thanksgiving gathers around our kitchen in the kitchen and we begin to go around and everybody mentions something that they're thankful for but I'm going to tell everybody today say it loudly tell God loudly I'm thankful I, what am I thankful for I'm thankful that he woke me up this morning I'm thankful that he's given me the activities of my limbs I'm thankful that he did not judge me based on what I should have gotten I'm thankful that he's a miracle worker I'm thankful for my family I'm thankful for my children and my wife I'm thankful for life. I'm thankful for the call on my life. I'm thankful for the doors he's opened. I've got so many things for which I am thankful for. But the question
question is, where is everybody else who also got healed? Where are the nine? What happened to the jokers who also got their healing? Where are they? That's what Jesus asked when the man came back and he gave thanks. He fell down on his face, verse 16, and at his feet, giving him thanks. And then it says this, he was a Samaritan. He wasn't supposed to be around a Jew. But in spite of the fact that he wasn't supposed to talk to a Jew, come near a Jew, encounter with a Jew, engage with a Jew, he still said, I don't care about those rules. I don't care about those racial divisions. I must go back and give this miracle working Savior who touched, who somehow touched my body without touching me and healed me. I got to go back and give him thanks. Jesus said, but where, where are the nine? Weren't there 10 of y'all? Why, why you, 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 this foreigner, this non-Jew, where, where the other fellas? I wonder how many of the people around your table today are foreigners, unthankful. I wonder how many around your table today in your house on this Thanksgiving day, how many people who are coming by your crib, how many who are going to be eating your food, how many of them are unthankful for the Savior that we serve and love? How many of them? have not given him thanks? How many of them haven't bowed their heads in gratitude? How many of them haven't given him the glory and the celebration? How many of them? Where are the nine? My assignment today is to challenge you today. Don't you be one of the nine who's been blessed abundantly, who's had God heal you and deliver you and work miracles, deliver and give you a job and washed away your sins and did something for you. Don't be one of those 10 who did not give thanks. Don't don't, don't be one of them. Please don't be one of them. Don't be one of them that falls into that category. Where are the nine is the question that I'm raising today. Where are you? How come you haven't given God thanks? Why? How come you haven't praised him? How come you haven't surrendered to him? How come you haven't bowed to him? How, what, what is it that has kept you from giving him the glory that he deserves? I may not know your name. I may have not even ever have met you. But I know that there's somebody watching this today that owes him a great praise and a great glory. That's what this message is about today. Don't be, don't be one of the nine. Don't be in that crowd. Don't be in that crowd. But give him thanks. I make a declaration today. I love you, Jesus. I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I thank you for shedding your blood for me. Thank you. I'm thankful. I'm thankful to you, Jesus, for being buried and getting raised from the dead so I could have eternal life. I thank you for being a God that inclines your ear to my prayer. I thank you for everything that you have done, are doing, and will do for me. What about you? Father, I pray today that you would change the hearts of the nine, those who you've worked miracles for, but yet they're too arrogant, they're too boastful to give you thanks. Change their hearts. Help them to recognize, help them to recognize the miracle that you have wrought in their life. In the name of Jesus, help them, God, to have that recognition. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. I pray you have a wonderful, tremendous day. God bless you.